In the summer of 1969, as the United States reveled in the afterglow of the successful Apollo moon landing, a far more terrestrial and ominous spectacle was brewing in the waters of the Atlantic. This was Hurricane Camille, a storm that would leave an indelible mark on the American psyche and on the landscape along the Gulf Coast. Camille formed as a tropical depression on August 14 near the Cayman Islands, quickly intensifying into a tropical storm and then, a hurricane as it moved west-northwest. By the time it reached the Gulf of Mexico, Camille had transformed into an extraordinarily powerful Category 5 hurricane. With winds peaking at 175 miles per hour and a pressure dropping to 900 millibars, Camille was poised to deliver a catastrophic blow. On the night of August 17, this monstrous storm made landfall on the Mississippi Gulf Coast near the small, sleepy town of Pass Christian. Camille brought with her a terrifying storm surge of more than 24 feet, one of the highest ever recorded. The surge swept away entire neighborhoods, leaving them in ruins, and water levels rose so high that many coastal homes were completely submerged. The impact was apocalyptic. Buildings that had stood for decades were reduced to splinters, boats were tossed onto land as if they were toys. In Pass Christian, one of the most harrowing tales of survival came from a group of people who had gathered at the Richelieu Manor apartments for a hurricane party, underestimating Camille's fury. The building was destroyed, but miraculously, a few survived by clinging to trees throughout the storm's peak. Camille's wrath was not confined to the coast. As she moved inland, the hurricane unleashed torrential rains across the southeastern United States. Virginia was particularly hard hit, flash floods and mudslides killed over 150 people in the region, adding to the hurricane's grim toll. In total, Hurricane Camille caused the deaths of 259 people and inflicted damages worth $1.42 billion in 1969 dollars, equivalent to about $10 billion today. The scale of destruction was unprecedented and served as a stark reminder of nature's power. The aftermath of Camille saw communities banding together in resilience, with recovery efforts marking a period of intense and cooperative work. Federal and state agencies, alongside thousands of volunteers, worked tirelessly to restore the affected areas. The lessons from Camille were manifold, leading to significant changes in hurricane prediction and preparedness. The National Hurricane Center, criticized for some of its predictions related to Camille, made substantial improvements in its forecasting techniques. Building codes were revised, and disaster response strategies were re-evaluated to mitigate the impact of future storms. Today, Hurricane Camille remains a benchmark for hurricanes in terms of intensity and devastation. It is a story of human tragedy and triumph, a reminder of our vulnerability to nature's might and our capacity to recover and rebuild. The memory of Camille lingers in the communities she affected, a testament to the need for vigilance and preparedness that resonates with every hurricane season. Intensity and Rapid Formation Camille rapidly intensified from a tropical depression to a Category 5 hurricane in a very short time, achieving peak winds that were among the highest ever recorded at the time. The speed and extent of this intensification were exceptional and unpredictable. Storm surge of unprecedented height, the storm surge reached up to 24 feet, one of the highest in recorded history for a hurricane, which obliterated entire communities along the Gulf Coast. Hurricane Party Tragedy the story of the hurricane party at the Richelieu Apartments in Pass Christian, where people underestimated the severity of the hurricane, resulting in the death of many partygoers, highlights a bizarre disregard for the dangers of such a powerful storm. Minimal initial warning and preparedness, despite its intensity, there was a lack of adequate warning about the strength of the hurricane until it was nearly upon the Gulf Coast, 
partly due to the limitations in meteorological technology and forecasting techniques of the time. Discrepancy in death toll reporting There was significant uncertainty and discrepancy in reporting the death toll and damage in the immediate aftermath of Camille, complicating rescue and recovery efforts. Unusual inland impact as Camille moved inland, it continued to cause significant destruction far from the coast, including causing floods and mudslides in the Appalachian region, which is unusual for a hurricane that typically weakens rapidly after landfall.